Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to calculate the force acting on a small mass in the presence of a spherical shell. This is a hollow shell of radius r. And the way to do that is to start taking some small little strips around the shell. And we need to first get the area of each strip, which is equal to the circumference, which is 2 pi r. But of course, that would only be the circumference at the center. We need to account for the fact that they get smaller and smaller as they get to the edge, so we need the sine of theta for that. And then we need the thickness of each strip, which is r d theta. So the dA is equal to 2 pi r squared sine theta d theta. Also, we need to know the distance from the mass to the top of each strip. That's equal to s. And using the law of cosine, having the angle theta here, we have r and a, which is a constant on this side, the distance from the mass to the center mass of the shell. We can say that s squared equals a squared plus r squared minus 2ra times the cosine of theta. We also want to take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to theta. So this becomes 2s ds equals ra, because these are constants, they drop out. So this will be ra sine of theta d theta, because the derivative of the cosine is the negative sign, taking care of that negative sign here. And then solving this for sine theta d theta, this is s ds over r times a. And that's going to come in handy later. So normally we would use this equation right here, where the force, or df, the small amount of force, which is going to be experienced by this mass, and because of symmetry, that force, df, is going to be along the path from m to the center mass of the sphere right here. But instead of using the df equals g m times the mass of that strip divided by s squared, we're going to use the potential energy equation of gravity minus g m dm over s because it's easier to use an s in the denominator than to use an s squared, and you'll see in just a moment because we're going to be using this equation right here. We also need to think about the mass. Let's say that sigma represents the mass per unit area, so the small amount of mass of this strip would be sigma times dA, the area of the strip, and sigma can be defined as the total mass of the shell divided by the total surface area, 4 pi r squared. So we're now ready to plug all that into our potential energy equation here. This is equal to minus g times the small mass. Instead of dm, we're going to write sigma times dA, and sigma is equal to this. So we write the mass of the disk divided by 4 pi r squared. And then we're going to write times dA, and dA is defined right here. So this becomes 2 pi r squared times the sine of theta d theta. So that would be mass times dA, that's dm, m divided by s. First of all, we can simplify some things. We have a pi, and we have an r squared, and there's a 2 that becomes a 1, this 4 becomes a 2. Now we're going to replace the sine of theta d theta by s ds over r a. So let's do that. So this is equal to minus g m big M. Sine theta d theta becomes s times ds divided by, we have a 2 here, we have an s here, and we now have an r times a. And then you can see that this s will cancel out with this s, and now this becomes a really easy integral to integrate because we only have a ds. And that's why we use the potential energy rather than the force equation. So now we want u, this is equal to the integral of du, which is equal to, taking all the constants out, we get minus g m big M over 2 r a, these are all constants, times the integral of ds from s1 to s2. So the s1 would be the inner s, and S2 would be the outer S. Now, what's the inner S and what's the outer S? Well, the smallest S would be when we have the, the strip right at the very edge here. So S1 would be A minus the radius, and then S2 would be when we're all the way on the other side, that would be A plus the radius. So S1 is equal to A minus the radius, and S2 would be equal to A plus the radius. So now we have the proper limits of our integration. So now this is equal to minus g m big M over 2 r a 
times the integral of ds is s, and we're going to evaluate it from a minus r to a plus r. Of course, we're going to plug in the upper limits first. So u is equal to minus gm big M over 2ra, evaluated from, when we plug in the upper limit, we get a plus r, and subtract when we plug in the over lim lower limit, we get a minus r. Notice we have a minus a that cancels out, and r minus a minus r that gives us 2r. So this is equal to minus g m big M 2r divided by 2ra. Well, that's interesting. Now what we see is we can cancel out the 2r in the numerator and the 2r in the denominator. So this becomes equal to minus g little m big M over a. And notice now that a is the distance from the mass to the center of mass of that sphere. And that is the same, the exactly the same as the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy that we get when we have a point mass. Which means that this spherical shell to an object outside the shell, no matter what the size of A is, anywhere outside the shell acts as if it's a point mass. Now, secondly, we know that to turn this into a force equation, so this of course is equal to the energy equation, the potential energy equation. Now to turn this into a force equation, we get rid of the negative and we square the denominator. So that means that therefore, the force experienced by the small mass is going to be equal to g m big M over a squared, which means again, we can see that the force acts as if the mass of the shell is a point mass at the very center of that sphere. And that was the exercise we're trying, that was what we're trying to show here is that when we take, when we calculate the gravity outside a thin shell, or the force due to gravity outside a thin shell, the thin shell acts like a point mass. So that's the force, and that's the potential energy caused by that shell. And that's how it's done.